Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about the luxury tax-free shopping in Paris. If you're tuning in for the first time, hi, I'm Katie. I like to do these luxury fashion videos here on YouTube. I share hauls and reviews, but at the end of the day, I share my journey so we can all mindfully curate our own collections. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions on this process. All of your support really means a lot to me. Many of you may already know that I have just returned from a trip to Paris. It was so much fun. We did a lot of shopping. We did a lot of eating <laughs> and exploring the city. When I was going, I didn't know really what to expect around the tax-free, duty-free, VAT return. Um, those all kind of mean the same thing. So I thought it would be helpful to actually kind of share a guide as to what the process looks like as of June 2022. VAT stands for value added tax, in case you were wondering. It's like the equivalent of sales tax in the United States. Um, typically about 20% VAT is already added to the purchase price um, in Europe. When we're talking about like tax return or tax-free shopping or VAT return, it's for non-EU residents to be able to get a portion of that VAT back, that value added tax back, uh, because they are taking the item out of the EU. So I wanna cover three main areas. One being the actual shopping experience, like what you need to do while you're doing your shopping in the city. Um, two being the tax return process at the Charles de Gaulle airport and the third being the actual duty-free shopping experience at Charles de Gaulle. While you're shopping at the boutiques, typically the sales associates will ask if you would like to do the duty-free paperwork. In order for them to process the paperwork, you actually need to have a physical copy of your passport with you. They no longer accept photocopies or photos of your passport and they need the physical passport. That's why I recommend you always have your passport with you while you are in Paris. Typically, I don't like to do that when I'm traveling because I don't want to lose it, but um, I knew in Paris it would be helpful to have my passport on me so that I can do the tax-free forms when I make a purchase. If for some reason you do not have your passport on you, I believe there's like a 24 to 48 hour window for you to come back to the store and get the paperwork processed. I believe the paperwork can only be created at the point of sale so within the boutique or within the store that you're purchasing from they have a lot of mobile checkout devices so even though you're able to make your purchase almost anywhere in the store sometimes you will have to go to a designated register in order to do the tax-free form processing at the store, they will then give you an envelope with your tax-free form inside, as well as your sales receipt inside. Um, and it's just so that it's easy to have them coupled together. This is basically what a form looks like. It covered out the uh, sensitive information, um, but this is an example of what a form looks like. Each form contains all of the items within your purchase. So there's usually one form for purchase, if that makes sense. It's not a form per item you purchased. Basically, while you're shopping, you'll be collecting these envelopes um, from all of the places that you're getting your tax free from. There are a handful of companies that are doing the tax free processing. Most of mine were processed by this company called Global Blue, but I also had a couple by this company called Planet Tax Free. While they're doing your paperwork, they will also ask you how you want to receive your tax refund. Uh, there are two options. One is cash, the other being uh, back on the credit card if you purchased with a credit card. I believe the credit card is sort of the preferred method like whenever I said credit card the essays would always be like oh good choice um, <laughs> because I think the cash option actually takes a slightly higher processing fee uh, from your return if you are shopping at a department store the process is a little bit different so you'll make all of your purchases throughout the department store itself you know each of the individual kind of stalls or areas the different floors and then um, there's a designated detox department. Detax is basically tax-free. Uh, so there is a designated detax department at Le Bon Marche. It was on the top floor. 
um, at Galleries Lafayette, I believe it was on the second floor. So there's this designated area for you to bring all of your receipts with you, and then you can process your paperwork there to make sure you get all of the forms for all your purchases. I did notice that the tax-free department can get quite busy towards the end of the day, towards closing time, because, you know, makes sense. Most people want to do all of their shopping and then go to the detax department at once. I recommend, especially if you made a larger purchase, this is what I did, I went straight to the detax department in the mid-afternoon after making those large purchases so that I could pretty much guarantee that I had my forms ready with me. There were a few items that I opted not to go through the hassle, honestly, because it either meant I had to make another trip to the department store or it was going to take some more time, so I just decided it wasn't really worth it. Um, and some boutiques will have limits on how much you need to spend or how much an item needs to cost before it sort of qualifies for detax or tax-free shopping. Some places I think it's like 175 euros. Some other stores it might be a little bit less than that, but um, it can vary. On the form itself, it will identify like the a retail cost of the item, the VAT that's been added, and the VAT that's supposed to be returned. And because I am that crazy person who created a spreadsheet to keep track of all of my tax-free shopping, um, I noticed the tax return rate ranges anywhere from about 10 to maybe 15%. I think mine were mostly between the 10 and 13% range. Hermes return was 10% and I believe the Chanel return was like 13%. So that's just something to keep in mind. And also um, because there is a processing company involved, they will take a, a small fee from all of your returns as they're processing them. So um, you might actually see a slightly smaller amount come into. It is a good idea to take a picture of your tax-free form. There's a barcode that has a specific like, you know, form number on it and case number, if you will, on there. Um, so in case there's any trouble processing your paperwork or you haven't received your refund, it's a good idea. It, it's helpful if you have a picture of it because um, some of them you may end up mailing in and you won't physically have the form anymore. Now on to the tax-free processing at Charles de Gaulle. The best way to make sure your tax-free processing is as seamless as possible, it's important that you have um, all the items with you, all of your forms with you, you need your passport and that passport name needs to match the name on all of your forms, and you also need to have some sort of proof of departure. That can be your boarding pass. Um, if you haven't checked in yet because you have some of your items in your check-in luggage and you want to make sure you know you can present those before you check them in. I overheard the inspection officers uh, asking for like a reservation confirmation that shows your name and your flight details on there and they accept that as well. I recommend you consolidate all of your items into like your carry-on if you can. Um, I did have some things that were in my checked luggage so I brought everything with me just to be sure. So the process is pretty simple. You go to these kiosks, they call them Pablo, they gave them a name, and um, you basically scan the barcode. That's the barcode up here. And you just line up all your forms and you kind of, you just scan it. After you scan it, it will either show you a green check mark, which means everything is good to go, your processing has started, yay. <laughs> Or um, if you scan it, you might get a red kind of warning. Now, it's nothing to be alarmed of. It just means that uh, the items that are part of that form will be part of inspection. So you will be required to line up to see an inspections officer and you will have to display the items. The line was pretty short when I got in line, but by the time I was over, the line did get pretty long. End to end, the returns process took about 45 minutes for me, so I would recommend you bank about an extra hour to make sure you have enough time to do all of your tax-free processing. When I saw the inspections officer, I presented the two forms that were read. Um, he asked to see the items, of course. Of the two forms, he only stamped one of them. Now, if you get a stamp on your form, you are required to mail that form. So all you do is you should take the form, you should keep the receipt with you. I, I just think it's 
better that you hold on to the sales receipt. Um, you put your form into the envelope that it came in, and you drop it in the mailbox in the end. I asked and I clarified because two of my forms were red. I asked and I clarified if I had to still mail both of them, and the inspections officer told me to just mail the one, the one that got stamped. I also remembered to take a picture of the stamped form just in case there's any issue processing, so that's another tip. But other than that, it was pretty simple. I just had to display the items. Um, I got the stamp on the form, I mailed it in, and that's really the end of your tax-free forms processing. Now you just kind of wait for your return if you opted to get it back on your credit card. For those who opted for cash, I heard the inspections officer uh, tell those passengers to then um, go through security when they get to their gate area. They said there's like a currency exchange place and that's where you're supposed to be picking up the actual cash. So it's an, it, it basically involves an extra step. Now you basically want to finish your check-in and then head towards security so you can start your duty-free shopping at the airport. I specifically can only share details about Terminal 2E because that's, uh, that's the terminal I flew out of. And specifically, 2E has gates K, L, and M. Our flight was actually departing from the M gates, but uh, once we checked in and we got through immigration, um, we were at the K gates. And we could see beyond the security kind of section that there were a whole bunch of shops. So we had a lot of time. We, our flight was originally scheduled for 1.30 in the afternoon. We got to the airport around 7.20 in the morning, which was honestly a little too early, but we wanted to get early so we had ample time to do our tax-free processing and also ample time to check out the duty-free shops. We were going to go through security and the person at the front who you know helps direct people where to go uh, was like, oh, your gates are actually M gates, so sh you should go over there, which effectively was an air tram that takes you to the M gates area. Um, but I just mentioned that I wanted to shop here at, because we had a lot of time before our flight. Um, and they said, oh, that's totally fine, and they let us through. So we went through the K-gate security, and K-gate area is definitely the newer area. I, I feel like it's recently been refreshed. Uh, as soon as you walk in, it's like all the major boutiques. There's like Chanel Boutique, Hermes, Dior, Cartier, Louis Vuitton, and then like around the corner, there was also like Bulgari, Tiffany, Gucci, like Celine, all the stores, like a lot of stores and a good number of restaurant options. Before you go to the airport, you can also check online what duty-free shops they have. And for example, Hermes has a boutique at the K, L, and M gate areas, but Chanel only has boutiques at the, I think, K and L gates. So not all stores will exist at all gate areas, which is why we wanted to just check out the K gates first. I was pretty surprised with how recent the inventory was. Like the Chanel boutique had a ton of 22A collection pieces out on display. Uh, the Hermes boutique also had a lot of spring summer and also had some pre-fall pieces come through. So I was pretty impressed. The K gate boutique seemed to be pretty well stocked. The Hermes boutique didn't have any handbags necessarily, not that I saw really anything on display, but lots of scarves, belts, shoes, and ready to wear in that boutique. It was pretty big. The Chanel boutique did have handbags um, and they it was pretty much all the different categories of Chanel fashion available in the boutique. Um, they also have like the kind of specialty foods and skincare, makeup, duty-free areas as well. So we did quite a bit of, of shopping while we were at the K Gates. If you buy any liquid items, like we bought some wine and skincare, um, they do put those in like the sealed duty-free bags. You should absolutely not open those packages until you reach your final destination. So we did a good amount of shopping. We didn't know how far the M gates were, so we gave ourselves a few hours before our flight would be departing to start heading over to the M gates. So to actually get to the M gates, we had to leave the K gate area, actually exit that area, take the air tram that brings you to the M gates. So you're still airside, but you're outside of security, technically. 
So that meant we had to go through security again once we got to M gates. So that's why it's really important to keep your liquids in the sealed duty-free package because as we were going through security, we had to take those out. The M gate area is definitely older. I don't think it's been refreshed like the K gate area has been. If I were to do it again, I would definitely do all of my shopping and do all of like grab a snack or eat or whatever at the K-Gate area and then move over to M-Gates a lot closer to my boarding time. M-Gates area also had an Hermes boutique. It was a lot smaller. Um, they had some of those like Cabas totes, Cabas, Cabas, I don't know, the, the Cabas totes on display. Um, they still had a pretty recent like inventory, if that makes sense. Like I could tell it was still the spring, summer and some pre-fall stuff, but the store is a lot smaller. All of the luxury boutiques there were smaller than they were really in, at the K-Gate area. When you actually shop duty-free at the airport, there is no VAT return to have to process separately. The prices you pay at the airport already exclude the VAT. I should also mention that you do your tax-free processing from the last country within the EU that you're leaving. The EU is a little bit unique because it is a union and there are a lot of countries that are a part of it. Typically you do your tax-free processing when you are leaving a country, even if you're going to a different one. For example, if I was buying stuff in Korea and I was visiting Japan and then I was coming back to New York, I would process my duty-free shopping at Korea, I would process my duty-free shopping at Japan, and then I would come back to New York. But the EU, because it's a collection of a lot of countries, let's say you are going from New York to Paris, and then you're going to Italy, and then you're coming back to New York. Even if you purchased items in France, you would process all of your tax return from Italy, because that's the last destination before you return to your home country. I know, it's like extra confusing, but I hope that makes sense. They don't consider you taking the items to another European Union country as out of the country. I think that's everything that I wanted to mention. I hope you found this helpful. I feel like when I was going through this process, I couldn't find a lot of resources on what to expect. And honestly, each boutique kind of tells you something different. So I, didn't, I really didn't know which one was true. I also want to preface that the process can always evolve. It can always change. So this is as of my experience in June 2022. For the most part, it was pretty streamlined. But if you have any other specific questions that I might not have addressed, feel free to leave them down below or head on over to Instagram and I'd be happy to help however I can. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of your feedback and support. If you like this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I post new fashion-related videos every Sunday and Wednesday. So until next time, bye!